Hello again everyone, pleasure to be back on FM Scout, my name is Neil, my channel is FM Stinger, something a little bit different for you today, we're going for the ultimate set pieces, attacking corners and attacking throwing. On today's video we'll be using my Darlington team, which I'm using in my Earthquake Resurrecting Darlington save, which you can catch on my channel. So why set pieces, why bother with them, why bother setting them up? They can basically be the difference for your team between success and failure. Just like in real life, you can turn an average team into a great team by getting a few extra goals from these scenarios. If you look at the above graphic there, you'll see my Darlington team. Goals from corners, 17, almost double the second place team. Those 17 goals this season have been vital, vital for our success. You get these attacking corners and attacking throw-ins right, you can get yourself a rake of goals from unexpected sources. Okay, we've got the goals running just below me there. This is a selection of the goals. It's not even all of them, but as you can see, the scores changing in the side there. It shows the different amount of goals in different matches. Now, what this will do is it'll take the burden off your strikers to score all the goals. The fella you can see mostly scoring there is a fella called Hockenhull, and he's a centre back. Centre back, and he finished with 14 goals this season, taking the burden off your strikers. The sharp eyed of you will realise that there's only two corner routines there. Two. One to the near post, one to the far. It's the players in and around that are doing the damage. We'll check that out in a little while. Okay, the first thing you really want to get right is your set piece takers. Who's going to be providing the bullets for your boys to score? Now the way I like to do it, and the way I set my corners up is, I want an in swinger. So on the left hand side, I want a right foot taking it. On the right hand side, I want a left foot taking it. Now choosing your man after you've chosen the foot you want is obviously down to the attributes. Who's good at taking corners? So you've got your corner attribute. If you want to get super detailed into it, have a look for a good crosser of the ball as well as the corner taker. So the lad I've got taking my corners on the right hand side is my left wing back, Luke Garbert. He's got a corner taking of 13 at this level. That's pretty decent. Clicking on him, he's also got a crossing level of 12. So he's very capable of providing a nice ball in. Always remember when you're doing your set piece takers is give yourself two or three options just in case you get an injury or your player comes off sub just so you've got another good option to take it when they're not on the pitch. Of course you do have the option just to press the quick pick button but just be wary of that because it'll put people in order of attribute level. Sometimes it won't take into account whether you want an in swinger or an out swinger. Plus you're better than that, you're not that lazy, you want to get this thing set up right. Right, that's our takers sorted. Who or what area are we aiming at? Okay, so we're targeting a specific player and we're gonna choose that player based on his attributes. So you can see my target in his set and the player we're going to be hitting is this lad. Now, there are three key attributes I look for when I'm aiming for a corner. There's some extra ones as well, but the three main ones remain the same. Jumping reach, heading and bravery. Jumping reach is his ability to get off the ground and hang. Heading speaks for itself. How good is he at heading? And bravery, one you might not expect, that's going to see how good he is at getting in where it hurts. Bang, getting involved, getting in the mixer. Now there is an argument for adding finishing to that. And if you can add finishing to that, brilliant. It's going to top it off nicely. However, it's not essential because not all your goals are going to come from this man. He's also going to lay a few of the bullets in these areas here for these boys. That's why they're hanging around. Finishing for me is a little icing on the cake. But the first three, they're the ones I always look for. Now Hockenhull was the guy featured in the video showing the goals going in before, so it's obviously worth a treat with him. Let's have a little look at his season stats. And there you can see from centre back, remember, centre back, he's weighed in with 14 goals in 45 games. I mean, that's striker ratio. So there's my top three, what to look for is, for your targeting and corners, jumping reach, heading, bravery. And if you get icing on the cake finishing, you're laughing. Okay, let's get on with it. What's the actual corner setup we're going for that brings all these goals? Two setups, one from the left, one from the right, both slightly different, just to keep the opposition guessing. Right hand side first, okay? So we've got our left footer taking it, so it's gonna in swing into these areas there. If you just click on the taker there, player instructions is aiming for the far post. And then at the far post, we've got the man we've targeted, the cream of the crop for this role. He's gonna be the main target. If you notice, there's a lot of other players there making runs and in the danger area. These are our distraction players because the main target is going to be that lad at the back post. But still you want to fill the areas with distractions so the opposition defenders need to mark up other players. Hopefully freeing up your player a bit more. 
for this reason, we've got a guy on the edge of the box who's going to make a run in. We've got guys lurking on the edge of the box. We've got a guy at the front post, and we've obviously got two players here. Those two players are quite important. Those two players are going to pick up the pieces. So if the ball drops in this area from your target, they can bang it in. Or if it comes off the keeper. Now, for that reason, I've usually always got an attacking player there. I have a striker or an attacking midfielder. They're going to be the ones to pick the pieces up if there is any. From the left-hand side, I've got my right footer taking it. He's going to swing it in to this area. And this time, we're going to the near post. Now, it's the same target as the other side. Our prime player to aim at. Again, we've got the distractions. We've got them on the edge of the box. We've got a guy bombing into the box. And we've got our two players ready to pick up the pieces. That's it. That's the two routines. Now, as I say, that had us finishing top of the table in regards to goals from corners. They were a massive boost for you. Let's have a little look at them in action once again. And you'll see a variety from left and right hand side, but every time it's hock and hull. This one comes from the near post, bang, in it goes. This one's a far post one, same gig, he's dominating. And there's players, if you notice, players all around providing the distractions. It's a great little tool. You're gonna to get some serious goals. It's especially gonna work down in lower leagues. Lower league set pieces is crazy. You can get loads of goals. At the minute I'm in league one, so we're going up. And as we're going up, it's proving more successful. I'm pretty confident it's gonna work in the higher leagues as well. Now corners are going to provide you with more chances to get goals, of course they are, you get more players in the box, you're whipping the ball in rather than throwing it, but you can get some serious goals from long throws in this game. First thing first, who's going to take these throw-ins? Now today we're talking about long throw-ins, so we are literally going for the long throw attribute, it's as simple as that. I have seen some people reluctant to use certain players to take their long throws because it involved them moving over to the other side of the pitch, that doesn't matter, get them using it, get them using that throw. You can put other people in their position while they're taking the throw in. For example, if you've got a really good right back who's amazing at long throws, getting taking them on the left hand side as well, provide cover to the right hand side while he's taking them. It's too good of a tool if they are really good at long throws, it's too good of a tool to not use, just provide cover. In my case, I looked out, I got a guy who's got 17 for long throws, I mean that's huge right? But look at his position, he's a striker. A lot of people would be reluctant to put him on throws because it's going to take him away from the striker position. So what I do while he's taking the throws, I've got a different player up front alongside me of a striker. So this is my man. He's my long throw taker. He's got a 17. The work doesn't end there though. A little shout to fellow creator JDFM for giving me this little heads up. You can work on his traits. Have a look at his player traits there. You'll see possesses a long flat throw. This allows the player to deliver a long throw with a low and flat trajectory similar to a cross in attacking areas only. That right there is key. He's basically gonna provide a bullet throw that's gonna be like a cross. Now, if he's got a long throw attribute that's high as well, quality, you're gonna be getting some serious results here. If he does not have that player trait of possessing a long flat throw, simply go to your training, get down to traits, discuss new trait, get him training on it. It won't take long. Once he's got that, there'll be no more of those big loopy crosses. They'll be bullet-like, just like a cross. So that's our takers sorted. Let's get to the setup. Now you want to approach these throws pretty similar to the way you approach corners. So we're going for long throws, but you will notice I've got a couple of distractions on there just to occupy the opposition. I've got a guy coming short and I've got a guy on the edge of the area. Now targeting of the throw is different to the corners. If you click onto your throw taker, you'll see it says long. Basically, this will instruct throwing takers to, to seek to launch the ball into the defensive area. You're not going to launch it into set zones, such as near post, far post. You're just going to ping it. The higher the attribute, the longer he is able to throw it. For this reason, you want a good mixture of players in and around the box. Attributes I'm looking to aim for are a little bit different to corners. Jumping, reach and heading are still there. Of course they are, but I'm also looking for a little off the ball movement as well. You're going to get more flicks from long throws. So these players in and around the box are going to come alive. If they've got a good off the ball movement, going to have a better chance of scoring but in general i want a good jumping reach at the front post and i want a good jumping reach at the back post and remember what i said about replacing the player who takes the throw my striker is taking the throw so i've got all sorts of replacements in there i've got the other striker but i've got my two wings in there i've even got one of my fullbacks because i've got three defenders back so i've got one of my attacking fullbacks he's taking the place of a striker in there this would be the same if the lad taking that throw on the left hand side was my right back i'd simply have my left back over in this corner here, ready to cover for him. 
Now look, you're not going to get as many goals as you are from corners, of course you're not, but you're still going to make a decent dent in the goal scoring column with your throw-ins if you can get it right. This throw-in routine has contributed to roughly 8-10 to 10 goals this season. There may be a period of time when your players learning the trait for a bullet throw that you find the throw going straight through to the keeper, but stick with it. Once he learns that new trait, you'll see the difference. Okay folks, and that's a wrap. That's set pieces in a nutshell. Hope you found that useful. A couple of little simple moves you can do. I guarantee you'll get some decent goals out of that. If you enjoyed this, please do pop a like on the video. Any comments at all, drop them down below. I'll do my best to answer them, as will the FM Scout team. In the meantime, please drop a sub to my channel as well. Take care, and hopefully, I'll see you soon.